Okay, I'm here at the 2021 Sun and Fun Air Show, and I'm here with Don. <laughs> Don, what are we standing next to here? We're standing next to a 1918 Curtis OX-5 okay. airplane engine. It's liquid cooled, approximately 500 cubic inches, or 500 cubic inches, approximately 90 horsepower on a good day. Uh, normally turns 108 inch propeller, uh, 90 horsepower. They built 12,000 of them for, the, for World War I. About 8,000 of them were used on Curtis Jenny aircraft and about another thousand on Canuck engines. Uh, Curtis couldn't handle the, uh, the, uh, the amount of engines that the government wanted, so they farmed out uh, production to Willis Motors, of Willis, Jeep, uh, of Willis Jeep fame, but uh, they built uh, the majority of these engines. Okay, so this is World War I, so what year would have this been? Pre-1918. 1918. 1918. Okay. It's liquid cooled. Um, so is, is this what you would call individual jugs on here then? Yeah, indi okay. individual like cylinders. Same thing that's on my jet ski, old jet ski yeah. works. So. And these are exposed rockers and valve springs. So oil goes through that push rod there and it squirts yeah. all over here and this whole thing just gets right. lubricated that way. Right, this is the camshaft for it, for okay. one. And the lifter body operates like this. So I don't have the time. I don't know if you can see that like that. Yeah. So that's just metal on metal then, no no roller in there. No, uh-uh. Okay. But this is this is for the intake valve. This 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 these two lobes operate the intake valve. The inner one operates the exhaust valve. Oh, okay. So and it's kinda like concentric, it's like two in one almost. Right. This is this, is this piece right here, the pull down too? Let's see, let me get a look here. So this is, what we're looking at, the push rod or the, the, the holder? Uh, the push rod, well, we're looking at both actually. Okay, well, yeah, that's what you because, have in your hand, I mean, yeah. Yeah, and that's the way this operates here. This, in the center portion operates the exhaust valve. I'm kind of fumbling around here, but center portion operates the exhaust valve. The outer portion operates the pull-down tube. Okay. Dual action. This this spring here is stronger than the intake valve spring. So when it reaches the flat spot, flat spot on the on the on the uh, cam, it pulls this whole assembly down and opens the intake valve. Okay. When when the uh, inner portion of this lifter body pushes on the pu on this push rod here, it opens the exhaust valve. Okay. So it's just a single camshaft for this then? Yes. Wow. Yeah, yeah just one camshaft. So 16 valves then. And where is the spark plug? It's right in the middle, right? Oh, it's right up here. So this is essentially like a, a Hemi engine then. Yeah, it is. A, it's a, it is a hemispherical combustion chamber yeah. on us. All right. Yeah, 500 cubic inches and, and uh, liquid, I don't know if I told you, liquid cooled. Mm -hmm. Water pumps here, comes through this gallery, up to the base of the cylinder, and then up to here through the head and back down around this way back into the Y manifold and then back to the pump back to the water pump how much oil does this use uh the capacity is four gallons and of course the, how much it uses depends on the state of the engine but there's quite a bit of blow by when you see it run you'll see it puffing puffing okay. through smoke and the camshaft is that gear driven yes yeah the, the the crankshaft, uh, there's a big gear like this that runs the, uh, runs the cam. The cam's right in here. One magneto. Let's run off this gear. There were two different magnetos that they operated. There was a Burling, which was a German-built magneto, and then the uh, Dixie, which uh, was a U.S.-built magneto. Wow. Burling had uh, Burling was a much better magneto, but during World War One we couldn't get anything from the Germans, of course. <laughs> yeah. So they had to go to the Dixie magneto, which had a lot of issues. Okay. Let's walk around the front of it. Can you tell me about the prop then? Sure. It obviously doesn't have any. Um, I don't even know what the correct term is there for the tilt action. Uh, oh. uh, uh, straight wooden like propeller. Constant, constant speed. Yeah. No. No, no pitch. Not, no pitch no. adjustment is, the, no, is what no, I meant to say. It's fixed pitch. Fixed pitch. Yeah. Fixed pitch propeller. Okay. Uh, normally they had a much larger uh, propeller on, a 108 inch propeller. In fact, yeah. we've got one inside that came off of Curtis Jenny. Oh, okay. And then was this standard, This uh, the way the wires wrapped around yes. here with these castle nuts, that was standard in World War One. 
Oh yeah, that's standard. That's that's an aviation standard there. You'll see that on all. Uh, if if the if the uh, nut and bolt is capable of turning and mm -hmm. loosening, they use safety wire to keep it from safety doing wire, that. Yeah. Okay. I've seen that in a race car. I just I guess yeah. I haven't looked close enough on airplane engines. So. Okay. And then how is the uh, carburation system working here? Where's that at? It's right down here. They were all hand propped, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. It's a uh, four barrel Zenith carburetor. Interesting that it's down here. I guess that's just where the good air intake there. So. Yeah, and they, they did not have carburetor heat on these engines, so they you know they were prone to carburetor ice. Yeah. Okay. Depends on how much fuel, but mainly it was, it was limited by the oil capacity. Yeah. Well, actually, it was lubrication, because all these are yet lubricated before each flight. So how much fuel was it able to carry? Well, the uh, like like water tank is very important. Clear? Clear. Clear.